So, so Mandy, it's good to see you another year, another NACIO. Yes. Uh, tell me a little bit about what's going on in Texas. I know you have a data literacy project that you're excited about. Tell us a little bit about what's going on there. Absolutely. So, obviously, everyone's talking all things AI, but we know that data is foundational uh, to being able to deploy those technologies. So, one of the things I'm really excited about is our my team under the Office of the Chief Data Officer for uh, Texas have built out a data literacy program. So this program, it's online, you can see it on our DIR YouTube channel. Uh, we launched it in October of 22, but it's not just for data producers, because it does do deep dives into that and really drives on best practices for the folks who actually are doing the day-to-day -day technical in the weeds, but it's also for consumers. So our goal behind this was try to make sure that business leadership uh, the decision makers understand the power of data, the value of data, and the importance of that data management and governance. That's great. And when you, you know, you have a, a longer term project like that, I mean, it's, it's what, May of 2024 now. Right. Uh, you know, how has that project evolved over time, especially as the technology and the space has really started to change in the last year or so? So, number one, there's been an uptick in folks wanting to take the course and so when we started it we figured that there would be some takers and we built out each module slowly to be able to put it out there um, and we've definitely seen an increase in that so now it's talking we're going to talk about like how do we update that how do we start perhaps building into that as well not just the talking about data but also privacy principles which would sort of be the next step of things that we really need to start driving home with some of our uh, customer agencies. And the, the privacy piece is so huge. It's something that you know I think is only taking on a bigger and bigger role in state government. Uh, what are some of the other privacy projects and things that you have going on at the IR? So we have a privacy officer at our agency who is absolutely fantastic, and she does spends a lot of time talking to other agencies, helping them build out their privacy practice, also working with our security teams and our data teams and the technologists as well to make sure that they have those privacy principles top of mind when they're looking at deploying these new technologies. And you know, really trying to just drive privacy as a practice. I think one of the, everyone's talking obviously about Gen AI, we expect it. But to me, one of the upsides and the surprising thing is which how much now people are leaning in to wanting making sure it's going to be deployed safely. So people are talking about privacy and bias and data and all of those sorts of things that we didn't really hear them talking about in state government a lot. There was a session earlier about workforce and how generative AI works in the workforce and it made me think about some of the workforce efforts that DIR has been thinking about and working about in the last couple of years. Uh, you know, how, how do you feel that the workforce is primed or, or not so primed for a more widespread use of AI and what are you seeing in Texas to that effect? So I think that folks are excited about it, um, but we have a lot of education to do. Um, and I don't think we're unique in government in that at all, not at, at all in that space. So we're looking for opportunities to partner with folks in the private sector to help do some education. We've built out a technology innovation and education center um, that's run under our uh, chief technology office and we're bringing in folks from the corporate community to talk to our agencies, to look for proofs of concept, to really do a hands-on lab where folks can get in there and explore because those challenges for upskilling our workforce to be able to handle not just, you know, Gen AI, but what's the next emerging technology? Because we know there's going to be more. This is just the current iteration of what's new. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, as, as we're talking about AI, you have an AI advisory council uh, in Texas. What's, what's going on there? What are they working on? What are they finding? And, and how are you putting it into practice? So um, the AI Advisory Council is a, was a body that's created by statute. So, and with a uh, member of the Senate, a member of the House, appointees by the governor, and then I'm also a member of that council. And so, so far we've had two meetings. Uh, we have another one coming up, uh, gosh, I believe it's next week. Uh, and what we've done is they're really exploring what are the concerns, how can we deploy it safely in government. They're excited to be able to, to deploy it and, and really leverage what could really be a, a trans transformational technology for the better. But we got to do it keeping in mind all those things, bias, privacy, uh, security, constitutional protections, 
Uh, we want to make sure that we're, it, it's accessible and that whatever we're designing, not only do we keep humans in the loop, um, but that we also design it with our constituents in mind. That's great. And so, you know, when you think about uh, these conferences, I see you about twice a year at a conference like this. I'll see you in New Orleans this fall. Um, when we have this conversation then, what do you want to tell me that you've gotten done over those several months in between? So what I'm hoping in the fall when I see you that I can tell you is that the AI Council, we were really able to do a deep dive. We were able, we got an inventory of how AI is being deployed currently in state systems so that we can really look at that and then determine do we need, what do the guidelines look like? What are the guardrails? Do we need um, an AI code of ethics? Are there so that we can actually say, here's our roadmap for being able to deploy that before we get into legislative session. Do we even need to legislate on this or is this something we can do without legislation? So I'm hoping that that we can tell you that. And then I'm really hoping we also have an AI user group, which is over 400 technologists in the state and they're all coming together because they want to learn more. So I'm hoping I can tell you about some really cool ways that we've deployed Gen AI.